Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, final prices with a special discount in a shop. Nice little problem today, we're given a array of integer prices. So let's say we got something like this. The problem description is kind of hard to reason about. It's very like mathematical, right? So let's put it into English. Let's say we're here, index i. We're trying to build an output array. So we want to have like some kind of mapping. So for each of these values, there's going to be a direct mapping in the output array. It's a one-to-one -one mapping. So it's going to be the same length as the input. And for this value, what we want to do is find the element j, and they say j is greater than i. So what they're saying in terms of English is find the next element after i, the minimum element. So like the nearest element after i, such that the element at like the next index, let's call it J, uh, here four is less than or equal to prices of I. So I, I think this is somewhat like vaguely similar to a different problem. If I recall correctly, I think we've solved like next greater element. So this seems kind of like the opposite of that's like the next a smaller element or the next less than or equal. So how do you do it? Well, brute force isn't bad in terms of like a working solution, how would we do something like that? Well, for each value. So for this guy, we're trying to populate the mapping. So for this guy, we're trying to find the next smaller or equal element. But it is technically possible that we won't find the next uh, smaller or equal element. So just to kind of quickly go through this example here, if we do, like just for this example, the next one is four, we take the next smaller element and subtract that value from the current one. So eight minus four, eight minus four, we get a four in the output. But what if it was impossible for this item to receive a discount? Well, what would that look like? What would an example of that look like? Because I think this solution at this point for each of these, we just scan through the remaining portion of the array. If there's an element smaller, then take it like the first one and subtract it from this guy. If we don't find anything, then I guess we could say the next smaller element was just zero and we could subtract zero from this if we wanna like make our code nice and clean, or maybe we could add an else statement, I don't know. But going back to what I mentioned earlier, in what case would we never find an element? Well, what if let's say everything is greater than this guy, if everything here was a nine? maybe. What would the output look like in that case? Well, for eight, didn't find anything smaller. In that case, it can stay the same, so eight. In other words, I guess we could just build the output, at least initially, uh, to be identical to the input, so something like this maybe, and then we can find the element that we want to subtract from eight, and if it happens to be zero, then we just subtract zero. What about the rest of the values here, these nines? Well, for this guy, the next element that's smaller or equal, remember that's very important, it could be equal, is nine. So what do we wanna do? Well, subtract nine from nine. I believe that's gonna put a zero here. And obviously all of these then are gonna be zero. I think for me at least, this sort of pattern is not super intuitive. I'll be completely honest. The main reason that I kind of know of it is just because I've seen it many times before and my intuition tells me that the fact that we're looking at like a certain way, maybe we can do a monotonic increasing or monotonic decreasing stack. So now let's try to just try this idea. And if you're not familiar with this, I will say that this is probably a difficult algorithm for a leak code easy problem, at least a little bit but it will give us a dramatic improvement from the brute force, which would have been an n squared solution. We will have a linear time solution. This is how I like to approach it. I just like to think about the problem, like the context of the problem. If we have a stack and uh, we're trying to build the output, let me say I initialize the output. So this is a separate array. This is my result array. And at the same time, I have a uh, stack. What exactly do we want the stack to be? Well, we kind of looked at if we had elements in increasing order, well, I guess it's not necessarily increasing, but like this could have been a 10, this could have been an 11, this could have been like a 12. All the elements are in increasing order, so then the output would be identical to the input. But what if it's the opposite? What if all the elements were maybe in decreasing order? So uh, just to get some more space here, maybe an example like this, eight, seven, six, five. Then for this guy, it's gonna be the next one. And so now, like this is how the algorithm is gonna work. I'm gonna go through each element. I have my eight here. And I'm gonna take this eight and I'm going to add it to the stack. For this eight, I'm saying, I want to find the next element that is less than or equal to eight. And if I find it, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna add it 
to the stack, that's, I think, where it can be kind of counterintuitive. No, because if the elements are like this, we actually don't want to add the 7 to the stack because we just found an element that is smaller than the top element of our stack. So in this case, we say pop the 8 and then subtract 7 from it, and then that's the value that we'd put in this spot. And then I'd uh, maybe add the 7, and then we'd see the 6, so we'd end up popping uh, the 7, and then we'd add the 6, etc. Uh, the other example would look like this. Now I have my 8, I add the 8 to the stack. I have a 9, I add the 9 to the stack, because before I do that, I would check, is 9 less than or equal to 8? It's not. So I would add it to the stack, because now I know if I find a smaller element now, it could be a 10. 10 is not obviously smaller, right? So then these elements are in increasing order. If it's equal, 9, then I'd pop uh, the previous 9, but I'd leave the 8 here. But it could have been even smaller. Maybe it could have been a 5. Then I pop actually both of these, because for both of these, the next smaller element was 5. And so for each of these, I'd say, okay, 8 minus 5, 9 minus 5. You can probably see now clearly that this is a monotonic increasing stack problem because the elements in the stack are going to be in increasing order always that is the guarantee because if they were not in increasing order strictly increasing order we can't have equality we can't have two adjacent nines because this nine would have popped the previous one so you see that there's sort of a contradiction that's why it has to be an in increasing order because if it's not an in increasing order well this guy's just going to pop both of these anyway and since we pretty much guarantee that we only push and pop from the stack at most once, it is a linear time algorithm. And worst case, we end up with a bunch of elements in the stack. Let's say it's monotonic increasing, 8, 9, 10, and then we wouldn't make any modifications. We'd never pop from the stack, and then the output result would be the same as the input anyway. So I think it's good to just think of it in those terms. If you sort of see that like the order of elements could be useful, try to just think of maybe a monotonic increasing stack would work. And maybe if that doesn't work, maybe try the monotonic decreasing stack. I think this pattern is best understood with examples. So I tried to walk through a few today. Okay, so now we are going to build uh, the result array. We could just copy it or use a list comprehension. I don't know why, for some reason, I feel like doing list comprehension just because it's at like the tip of my fingertips. So P in prices. This will create a deep copy of this array. I think we might be able to reuse this array, but it's best not to like modify input objects. So we will just do this as is. And now I want to have my stack. It's going to be monotonic increasing. And I guess one thing I didn't show earlier is I just showed the values that we're adding. But when we pop the value and like inside of the loop that we're going to have, we're going to need to update this array here. So we're going to need to index this array. So what I'm actually going to be adding to the stack is the indexes of the values and the values themselves are increasing order, strictly increasing. So uh, let me just show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through every index from nums and then I'm going to say this index, let's just append it to the stack. So we're guaranteed that we're going to append this guy to the stack because after we append it, then we're going to look at the next elements that come after it to try to find a smaller one. But before we can add this to the stack, we might need to pop from the stack and we might need to do it more than once. Not an if statement, a loop. It's possible that our stack is actually empty. So that's an edge case. So let's check that if stack is non-empty and then the top of the stack. So stack at negative one in Python, that gives us the index of the element that's at the top of the stack. Well, what's the value of that element? This is an index. So I can just say a prices of that index and it's greater than or equal to the prices at index i. Uh, prices of i is the current element that we are gonna append. I mean, that's the element, but we're appending the index. So I hope this part is starting to become clear, even though I will be honest, if this is your first time seeing this pattern, it is difficult. I'm not going to lie to you and act like this pattern was easy for me to understand the first time. But here we see that the top of the stack is greater than or equal to the current element, or we could say the current element is less than or equal, like this is the next smaller element. So we want to pop stack dot pop, and that's going to give us an index. I'm going to call it J because we already used I up here. And so now I want to say that the element at this index prices at J should be subtracted from or I think I had it backwards, sorry. The current element, the element at prices of i, should be subtracted 
from the result at index j and go ahead and just subtract that this is the whole code i know it looks simple it's definitely not easy to wrap your head around i'm going to go ahead and run this okay i thought we had it right but just based on muscle memory i typed uh, nums let's change it to prices so looks like it is pretty efficient if you found this helpful check out neatcode.io for a lot more thanks for watching and i'll see you soon